Hello all and welcome back. We are now to the point where we're gonna take our beautiful cake here that we just crumb coated. All nice, lovely, it's been sitting for about 45 minutes so the icing has set really well on it. And we are gonna now cover it in fondant. So before we get going, cause fondant is kind of a fickle material here, we're gonna make sure we get everything we need ready to go. So first of all, you're gonna obviously need your cake. Go ahead and put it to the side cause you're not gonna need it right now. Powdered sugar here. Go ahead and get a good amount here. That way the fondant doesn't stick to the table or the, the rolling pin. You'll need a rolling pin. You'll need a pizza cookie cutter so that we can trim the fondant around the cake. You're gonna need a fondant smoother so we can smooth the fondant out and make it have that really pretty look. And you're gonna need something to adhere the fondant to the cake. You can use water. If you do use vodka, it will dissolve the alcohol on it. So either one of those will work. Just don't get too crazy saturating the cake, but you do want to have a nice little spritz on the cake right before you lay the fondant. So the fondant will stick to something because the icing is already dried and it's already set. If you do crumb coat or we do the fondant on a cake that you just crumb coated, the icing will probably serve as a good sticker on its own. But like I said earlier, I do like to have it set. That way it's got those really good angles. Everything's good to go on it. So first thing first, I'm gonna move all the stuff out of the way that I don't need right now because I'm gonna need plenty of room and I'm gonna start sprinkling some powdered sugar on the table. Now, if you use chocolate fondant, you can still use powdered sugar, um, but a lot of people use cocoa powder so that you don't have white spots all over your fondant. So since we're doing white fondant on a white cake, we're gonna go ahead and go with powdered sugar. So this is where it's gonna get a little bit of elbow grease in here. We're gonna keep kind of smoothing a little bit at a time. You're gonna kind of keep turning it, making sure that there's still powdered sugar under your fondant. And this is the part right here where you're kind of need to get it in just kind of the right area to make sure you got enough to cover all your cake. So you're gonna be going back and forth. And like I said, you're gonna kind of keep picking it up, moving the powdered sugar around, and then keep going. It's a good workout. Anytime I have to do a lot of cakes, like for a class or anything, I've got a good shoulder burn the next day. Keep, like I said, moving the powdered sugar around, kind of keeps, it's kind of like pizza dough in a way, the way you're working it a little bit. Now, you don't want to tear it though, you kind of let it keep going, keep going, keep going, because if you tear it, you kind of almost have to start over. I also like to work my fondant ahead of time. By working it, I mean kind of roll it in a ball, warm it up a little bit, just makes it a little bit easier spread than just rather cutting it. Another thing I didn't think to tell y'all too, my particular brand of fondant that I like to use on white fondant is Fondix. That is my favorite brand. There is other brands like Wilton, Satin, Ice, um, a couple other ones. I just find that this is the easiest one for me to work with. It tears the least. It tends to stress me out the least, which is a good thing because when you go to lay the fondant, that's to me the most stressful part because that's when you know either A, you got to redo it or you got to strategically put a flower in a spot. No, I'm kidding, but that is true. Now for chocolate fondant, I actually prefer satin ice. I think it tastes really good. I just think it's a it's a pretty product. It works really good too making black fondant. Just add a little black food coloring because you're probably never gonna make black fondant out of this. Sorry, hopefully I'm not hitting the camera too much to mess y'all up. So this looks like a pretty good idea. If you're unsure of it and you're feeling brave, you can kind of take it and kind of somewhat laid over. Looks like we're good there. I'm gonna do this a little bit more in this one area. There we go. Now is the time where we're gonna spritz the cake. So I'm gonna take the fondant, kind of drag it over here, put the cake right here. I'm gonna move it a little bit more in the screen. This is gonna be a little hard because I don't have the super fancy angles, but I'm gonna get to where you can see it as well as I can. Then I'm gonna take my spray bottle, which is like right here, start spraying the top of the cake, all around the sides of the cake real fast. There we go, cake, nice and wet right there. So now we're gonna take the fondant and I'm going to make sure number one, it's flat. Okay. We're gonna look on the sides and make sure we got plenty of coverage everywhere. I particularly love the Lazy Susan for this. I don't know how I ever did it before because it makes it easier to kind of move around the cake. Now, first of all, what I'm doing is I'm kind of securing the sides here. This is gonna be the part that's a little harder to see, so I'm gonna kind of do it as well as I can where you can see it. And this is where I'm taking the fondant here 
Hopefully you can see it pretty well. And I'm just adhering it to the cake. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go smooth it all later. But basically I'm trying to work all the crinkles out of it before I cut any of the fondant off. You don't wanna leave all this extra fondant hanging over the sides because it can pull on the top of the cake and you don't want it to rip your cake. So still doing the same thing, just kind of smoothing sides like so till we get back to the front of the cake. Now is where I'm gonna take and do my first preliminary cut on it. That way I get all the excess weight off of the cake. So I'm not harming it now. There we go. All right. Okay, perfect. So now we are making it happen. Okay, so I'm gonna take our fondant smoother at this point and I'm gonna go around. When you go around, smooth part this way or whichever way you're going forward. So hopefully you guys are seeing this okay. See how it's smoothing out and around? Oh my God, I'm gonna drop my cake. Smoothing out and around right there, just keep it going. We're wanting it to stick right now. Okay, so now the next part is taking it and going up and down it, just like so. The whole point of this is we're gonna smooth it up and down and side to side so that we get the most smooth surface possible. Now we're smoothing the top, smoothing the top. Just like so, look at that, it's beautiful. Now we're gonna go around the edges. Edges, edges, edges. There we go, looking good. Okay, now I'm gonna go up and down again. Making sure it's looking good. Checking out the sides, making sure the round tip is going where you need it to go. Whatever direction you're moving, make sure the round tip's first because there's nothing worse than having a beautifully covered fondant cake and you tear it because you're doing it the wrong way. Now, I'm gonna show you here in the angle. You can see the sides of the cake. Looking good, looking good. So now we're gonna do the fun part, we're gonna trim it. So this part, hopefully you can see it in the camera, I'm just going around the very edge of the cake. On a white on white cake, this is a lot easier. It's super fun when it's chocolate and white fondant because you <laughs> nothing worse than chocolate icing oozing out the side of a white fondant cake. You, My rule of thumb is you never want to know what type of a cake is underneath it. That is the biggest key. So we're gonna finish up this last little step here on the fondant and let me show you here on the camera. We have a perfectly smooth round fondant cake. So hopefully you guys can see it all. And now we are ready. This is actually gonna be for my cake class. So now we're ready to get ready to decorate it. Thank you guys for joining me and I hope you learned a lot of super fun techniques here on how to ice a fondant cake. And I hope you were able to see everything pretty well. See you guys next time, bye-bye.